Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video we are going to be checking out this all new iFlight flight controller PDB ESE combo. This thing right here is going to blow your mind. It is actually pretty dang incredible. I'm excited to show you guys what this is all about because myself, I'm curious, what is this all about? What did they do here? What type of abomination is this? So we're gonna crack this open today. We're gonna take a look at it. And then very soon, we're gonna be putting this in a build. We're gonna take it for a flight and we're gonna see what it's all about. Let's go. Oh. All right, pilots, let's go ahead and dive in to opening this puppy up. Let's see what all it comes with. So when I first laid eyes on this thing, I was actually like, oh my God, one board has it all, H7, all kinds of amazingness built in on top of the board in one board, one drone, everything's amazing. And I'm like, holy this is absolutely awesome. Why haven't we been doing this all along? Well, then I noticed one little word. Whoop. Whoop. Like, what do you mean whoop? What do you mean 55 amp all in one whoop? Like, what does that actually mean? Now, real quick, I do want to point something out for some guys that are probably saying something. Right here, it does say 45 amp all in one. This is not the 45 amp all in one. That would be an F seven this here is a h7 and we'll go over that if you're unsure what that is they've made some type of mistake on the label so just ignore that i don't want you to think that uh, i'm confused or, or something like that so let's go ahead and see what comes inside of this thing and we need to try to understand what it means by whoop but also uh, 55 amp i mean a whoop is not a <laughs> okay so First off, we've got our connectors. We've got XT60, we've got XT30, which, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Then you've got a little pack of mounting screws, which everything appears to be M2. So it's as if they're planning for us to go ahead and put this on a smaller quad or, or a, a, a whoop drone, per se. What we got here is we've got one, we've got two and we've got three capacitors now we've got two one size and then one that's a little bit smaller and that's going to be if you are wanting to build a bigger drone or if you're building a smaller drone because this thing does have a lot of versatility now also here we've got two connectors if we separate them you can see they're just quick plugs you can use them to wire up or connect whatever you got going on and we can go over the wiring a little bit more if you just bought one of these and you want to know how do i wire it how do i get the most out of it and then in the future when we do the build video you'll be able to follow along with that so you know what to build it how to build it where to solder it how to program it beta flight the works all right we are left with the board here and it comes in a little bit of poppy pop and we're going to go ahead and pull this out of here. What is this? Look at this. This is a little board. This is not a full size board by any means, but holy cow, is it packed with juice? Oh my God. I don't even know where to start. All right. So for starters, let's just stick this side by side with a 30 by 30. Here is a fully equipped 30 by 30 ESC. It's got its MOSFETs, tons of capacitors, everything on board right here. And that allows you to see the difference. So this is definitely smaller than this, but I mean, it's not like a crazy amount of small, right? Well, that's actually wrong because if you want to take into consideration that this board is not just this, this board, this board is also this too. So if you want to take this and then compare it to these two, I mean, that's a really small board. But guess what? I'm not done. This board is also a PDB. Look at that. I know this board's a mess, but work with me here. Look at this. This one single board right here is equivalent to all three of these boards. This is a flight controller, an ESC, and a PDB all built into one beautifully laid out board. I mean, nobody can deny that. That is just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so let's go ahead and slide this stuff aside. 
And let's actually dive into this. What is this? What does it come with? And let's try to understand what's going on. So the very first thing we need to discuss is that this is a whoop board. Now that means that it's designed to get mounted on a whoop quadcopter and whoop quadcopters actually don't mount like normal boards. And the reason why I'm able to point that out to you is because I can see the gyro right here. So for example, a normal board might get mounted like this or it may get mounted like this. And if you notice our gyro and what this little chip is, is this is our gyro. If you don't know what a gyro is, a gyro is a device that's used for measuring or maintaining orientation and angular velocity. So that means when you tilt your, your flight controller forward, that gyro knows in space where that board is and what turn it is. Even y'all, even if you turn the board like this, it knows. It knows the difference, and I can demonstrate that for you on Betaflight, and that right there is truly phenomenal that these boards even have that, let alone that every board has that, but we're not going to talk about that right now. If you guys want to know more about gyros, let me know. We will discuss gyros. What we want to do now, every board has it. It has a little arrow. There it is right there. So we want to face that forward. That means that this board is designed to mount in the quadcopter in this orientation. This is front, this is back, left and right, and that is how the board will mount. When you talk about a traditional uh, uh, quadcopter, the mounting doesn't, doesn't allow for this. You just have a simple 20 by 20 or 30 by 30. Well, this is not 20 by 20 and it's not 30 by 30. This is 25.5 by 25.5, which is actually uh, equivalent to exactly one inch. I mean, it's like a hair more. 0 0.003, but it's pretty much an inch. So this board packed with all this stuff is only one inch long by one inch wide. That right there is phenomenal. So let's talk about what else is on board here because man, this thing just has everything on it. All right, so obviously the elephant in the room or the big thing that we need to talk about is this monstrosity of a chip right here. This is your main chip. This is your microprocessor. Now, if you're not too familiar with flight controllers and how they work, they have a microprocessor on them and that is basically the brain of everything. Now, we have been flying since F1, really, STM32 F1s. Then we moved into F3s and when the game really changes when we got into F4s, like the F405, those are amazing microprocessors. They can handle pretty much everything. But as, uh, you know, as FPV drone pilots, we went ahead and pushed the bar and we moved on to F7s, which was truly, truly phenomenal. We, we still haven't even uh, uh, reached the full capacity of what those microprocessors can do. But now everybody is jumping on this H7 hype. And let's be honest here, we need to give all credit to Dominic Clifton. That is the gentleman who put the first H7 on his Seriously Pro Extreme board. And he even used this color, which I'm surprised to see that iFlight did that because most companies stick to their board color, like Fet Tech is blue, Pyrodrone is yellow, uh, Lumineer is white, so on and so forth. These guys decided to use the H7 microcontroller and jump away from their normal uh, bluish color to jump over to his green. I'm a little surprised that they did that, but hey, this is the world we live in, right? So with this H7 microcontroller, so you can understand a little bit, the F4s normally run at somewhere around 168 megahertz. Then we went ahead and pushed the bar to an F7, which is 216. Now, that is a lot. That is pretty much more than we need, but this H7 actually has the capability to run at 480 megahertz. That is double, that is more than double of the F7. So this guy is super fast, but it can actually hold like up to eight motors, eight servos, 10 UARTs. I mean, this thing just goes on and on and on. So by having this on the board, this board is not limited to anything. If they've laid this out properly and given us the correct pads, you know, as the firmware progresses, this board can also continue to progress. There may be some people asking about an inverted signal because if you're familiar with the F4s, it, it cannot invert the signal. So you have to put an inverter on board, then you invert it and you're able to run your signal as to where with the F7, you do not have to do that. 
Also with the H7, you do not have to do that. All right, so now also on board, what we're seeing here, you might be curious as to what these are. These are these beautiful MOSFETs, and these FETs have built-in metal right there. At least that's what it appears to be to me. I have not been able to find any info on them, but you should have 3, 6, 9, 12 on this side and 12 on this side. That is your highs and your lows, and a normal flight controller would not have that, but this is a ESC and a flight controller all in one. I am super excited to wire this thing up. I can't wait to take this to the sky. Now also, right here, this plug guy right here is actually for DJI. That means you just plug in and you can connect to anything you got, but keep in mind, there is no 9 volt or 12 volt reg on board. I did check. We don't have that. So what that means is, is that you cannot connect a DJI air unit directly to this board and assume that it's going to be okay. Because when you power up LiPo, me personally, I'm going to push this thing to the maximum. That means that I'm going to put it on a full 5 inch quadcopter. I'm going to strap a full 6S battery to it. And I'm going to watch this board explode. So if you want to watch that, make sure you don't miss that video coming up. Your DJI cannot just connect. Your Cadex Vista, which can handle all of that voltage, can, but your DJI Air Unit, uh, according to the book, cannot. And I can make a video on that, let me know, but I have wired since day one all of my DJI uh, air units directly to 6S voltage and I've had zero issues. All right, continuing on on this board, we can go over the pads here in a sec, but we've got onboard Betaflight OSD. So immediately when I said, hey, you can wire up your DJI directly to this, all of the analog guys are going, Aww. Well, no, don't worry about it, because right here they went ahead and connected uh, the Betaflight OSD, and this is the normal chip that they always use. There's nothing fancy or nothing not fancy about it. They even managed to squeeze a little, little boot button right there. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. All right, so we've got our gyro OSD. Now, this is our H7. Now, also right here, you're going to notice this little tiny hole. That is a barometer. Now, this is not your everyday barometer. This will give you some extra components, but right now, at the time of this video, so it depends what you're watching and when you're watching this, but at the time of this video, right now, we our latest stage is beta flight 4.2.5, and this guy right here needs a minimum of 4.3 to run, and when I plug this into the PC, I actually had beta flight 4.3 on it. If you want to get the most out of this when the new beta flight comes out, make sure you grab it. That's all, no big deal. Now, right here, you're noticing this chip here, and this is a wind bond. This is just a on board memory flash deal. That means if you want a black box, you've got it right here. Now, this H7 microcontroller, uh, to try to help you understand, it does not have a lot of onboard memory. So this guy here kind of runs in comparison with it and they work together. But it has a very cool feature. I don't know if it's available on this board. I know it is on Dominic's board. You can actually load firmware to your memory card and then flash your flight controller off of the memory card. So you're basically flashing your flight controller without a computer. And that right there uh, is pretty astonishing. So we also need to uh, discuss this. Uh, we're going to have to jump into beta flight. If we were to mount this like this, which I'm going to show you how to get around that. And that is a little shout out to a pit crew 4D and he created this guy right here. I went ahead and printed one out. I use blue because my quadcopter is going to have a blue theme, but this is pretty cool. You mount this inside of your build just like yay, right? 30 by 30, or if you need to, 20 by 20. And what's pretty cool is some boards actually use little lock nuts here. He actually made the cutouts so you don't have issues with that. And then this guy, being in the orientation that it mounts in, would mount just like that. Look at that. That right there, this is such a simple thing, but it's so smart. Let's just talk about this for a second. This board is $90. That is a lot of money for a board. But if you are building a five inch quadcopter, $90 for a PDB, ESC, and flight controller is really not that bad. If this can perform the way that it's designed to perform and what they're discussing and what they're telling us that it can do, then really this is all, it's not all that bad. There's plenty of 
of hundred dollar stacks out there. So all the guys freaking out and uh, saying that this is way too much money for this board. I mean, be realistic. Ninety dollars is not too much for a full stack. Now, if the board can't handle it and it is exploding in the sky, which I'm going to find out if that's true, then $90 would in fact be too much. So before we get into connecting these real quick, I do want to discuss this and what you're probably, I don't know if anybody caught on to this, but these are the capacitors that it came with. This is not the normal capacitors that we use or that our stuff comes with. We normally get these guys right here. These are just aluminum electrolytic capacitors and, uh, you you know they're great they work they're low ESR well this is not that this is a organic aluminum polymer capacitor and it does have a few different properties on the inside this is not a capacitor lesson but this guy has solids inside instead of actual like liquid or paste which is inside of the electrolytic so this is pretty awesome so there this does mean a few things for this which really <laughs> i don't know if it's going to affect your flight or the life of your uh, of your quadcopter because you're going to crash it into a wall before this thing dies anyways but uh, they are supposed to have a longer life and they also are much more, uh, lower on ESR and they are more of an asset with your ripple current and everything else like that. So these are supposed to be better. That's pretty nice that they threw that in. I don't know if maybe there's a drought and that's all they could find. Maybe they got a better deal on them or maybe they wanted us to have the best of the best and they paid a little bit more to add these for us. And they didn't only just give us two of them because two is pretty awesome. You've got two 30 5 volt 470s which means you can use these for 6s but they've also given us a 16 volt okay so if you're going to run your little whoopee whoop that's the guy you want to use right there and that's going to do just fine so you've got here you've got a uart you've got your ground you've got some 5 volt pads then you have your camera your vtx you've got another uart down here you've got your buzzer you've got a motor one motor two motor three motor four probably not in that order i was just showing you and then right here they stuck on the corner an r1 t1 that is another uart available to wire up whatever peripherals you want you can connect all kinds of stuff through UARTs. That is how this board will communicate. Uh, we really didn't go over this. This is just a standard ESC on the back. You've got your processors here, then you've got your BB2 chips, and everything else looks good. Uh, capacitors are kind of spread out, but I guess they're still there. What do we got? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I mean, so we got 20 caps or so. I mean, is that really... Uh, is that really less than another ESC? I mean, look, look right here. What do we got? We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, I mean, 60. So this has more capacitance than this guy here. I mean, those might be a little bit bigger, but I mean, come on, really, it's not really lacking in anything. I mean, of course you can, you can never have too much, but what does it hurt to, uh, oh, I mean, what's the big deal? We'll just add a bunch of our own. I love doing that anyways. So no big deal there. So this here is your iFlight H7 flight controller ESC PDB all-in-one 6S with an H7. I mean, this thing is phenomenal. I'm so excited to try this out. I'm going to wire this up into a build. I'm going to link the build video for you guys. Go ahead and check that out. I'm telling you this is going to be awesome. Then we're going to take it to the sky. We'll do a little bit of programming. We'll do a little bit of pushing the limits and we're going to see this thing explode or we're going to see it move to the top of the food chain. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit of something and I will see you on the next one.